Hi guys, my name is Ben. I'm the strength and conditioning coach at Canoe Wales for the Talent Pathway. And this is just a little video to take you through some of the exercises on our athletic development framework. So the reason we're doing SNC is to increase our force output onto the water so we can make bigger strokes and go faster. We want to increase our fatigue resistance so we can go faster for longer. And we want to decrease our injury risk so we can paddle more frequently and at higher volumes and intensities. The exercises in this framework are split into seven categories. So we have pushing movements, pulling movements, dynamic trunk exercises, stabilizing trunk exercises, shoulder health exercises, squatting movements, and hinging movements. The timestamps for each of those categories can be found in the description. If you just click the time for each one, it'll take you to the exercises for that category. For the general paddler, we'd like to see at least one exercise from each category in a session. And if you look on the framework document on the Canoe Wells website, you can see the thought process behind an example session. So without further ado, let's get into the exercises. These are our pushing exercises. So these are a series of press-ups moving from incline to the floor to decline. With all the press-up movements, you want to stay nice and strong from the head to the heel. Keep the legs and the trunk nice and long. As you come down, you want to pause at the bottom, keep it nice and controlled, and then push the floor away, pushing up as high as you can. Now our vertical pushing movements. Number five, we've got our overhead press. You can do this with a band or dumbbells, barbells. What we want to see is the wrists stacked over the elbows and you're standing nice and tall. Number six is a Z press, which is essentially the same, but from a seated position on the floor. Legs out in front of you. Again, wrists stacked over elbows. Try to sit nice and tall and show off the logo on your shirt. Number seven, we've got our handstand walks. You can progress into this by learning how to handstand either against the wall or with your friends holding your legs. But when we're doing the walks, we want to see feet over the shoulders and as little side to side movement as possible. Now our accessory push movements. We've got our tricep dips against the bench. So you want to have nice long legs, pushing up as high as you can, touching your bum to the floor. And our explosive push is going to be our med ball push throws. So you want to have the ball from your chest pushing it out towards a partner. Make sure you're a suitable distance away from each other. Stay nice and strong through the trunk and push the ball as hard as you can. This is a banded bent over row. So from a standing position, you wanna push your bum back, find a nice strong position, get tension through your trunk, and then just pull your elbows up past your sides and let the band back down. You can progress this by making it a single arm bent over row. So if you fold the band in half, you have the exact same setup from standing, push your bum back, and then you want to pull your elbow back as if you're starting an engine. Our next pulling exercise is going to be the supine row. We've got a few progressions of these, the first of which is going to be with a bent knee, just going to make it nice and easy. You want to pull your chest right up to the bar and keep your hips nice and high. Then you can move on, straighten your legs out, and it's exactly the same movement. Bring your chest to the bar, and then if you want to make it really difficult, you can put your legs up. The higher your legs are, the more difficult it's going to be. And again, exactly the same. Keep your hips up, head nice and neutral, pull your chest to the bar. Last of our horizontal pulling exercises is going to be a single arm supine row. Exactly the same setup. You can move from bent to straight to elevated. You want to keep your hips nice and high and bring your chest up to the bar. So now we're going to move on to our vertical pulling progressions. First of all, we've got a dead hang where you're just going to hang nice and still from the bar in a pull-up position. To progress that, you can just bring your shoulder blades down and back together and then relax them again. Then we can progress onto a banded pull-up. Make sure you're nice and still at the bottom. You're going to pull your elbows into your sides and pause at the top, pause at the bottom. Keep your body nice and strong and long.
After the banded pull-ups, we're gonna move on to a chin-up, which is exactly the same, just a different grip. So you're gonna have your palms facing you and a bit closer together. Again, we wanna see nice and long body. Bring your elbows into your sides, pause at the top, pause at the bottom. Once you've mastered the chin-ups, you can move on to the wide grip pull-ups. Again, nice and strong. Bring your elbows into your sides, pause at the top and pause at the bottom. Make sure you come all the way down until your elbows are fully extended. After our vertical pulling movements, we've got our accessory pulls. So this is an upright row with a wide grip. We want to bring the band up till our wrists are in line with our shoulders and you want to lead the movement with your elbows rather than your wrists. After the upright rows, wide and narrow. We've got a banded bicep curl, which is very self-explanatory. All you want to fo focus on is keeping your elbows still rather than lifting it up out in front of you. Moving on now to our stabilizing trunk exercises. The purpose of this category is just to reduce the movement around the spine. We'll start off with our front plank, where you want to just keep a long torso from head to heel. You want to be strong as steel, keeping your whole forearm on the floor and keeping breathing throughout. Next up, we've got the side plank, exactly the same thing, head to heel, strong as steel, whole forearm on the floor so you're not putting too much pressure on the elbow. Keep your hips nice and high. Next up, we've got our knees elevated bird dog. You can make this more easily by having your knees on the floor, but I prefer the knees elevated version. If you want to make that more easy, you could just do one leg or one arm at a time rather than both at the same time. Focus with this exercise. You just want to keep your, from your hips to your head nice and straight and keep everything as still as you possibly can. Similar principle for the next exercise, which is a dead bug. In the start position, we want to see the thighs and the arms parallel. We want to see the lower back pushing down into the floor. If someone was going to be trying to push their hand under, you wouldn't want to let them under. Keep that lower back pressed nicely into the floor. Moving on now to our crawling series. First up, we've got the bear crawl where you're going on, your all, on all fours and you're just going to move forwards and backwards, trying to keep your hips and your shoulders at the same level. Next up, we've got crab crawls, which is very, very similar, but you're going to be facing upwards. You want to try and keep your hips as high as you possibly can. Take nice small steps and try and keep everything still. Don't let it move side to side. Lastly, we've got our monkey crawls. So you want to keep the hips nice and high, feet and hands very close together. And it's going to be a little bounce moving forwards and backwards. Next up, we've got our pal off press and pal off raises. So the pal off press, you want to bring the band into your belly button and push it straight out in front of you. Don't let it go left or right. Keep your hips and your shoulders facing dead forwards. Keep everything still, just push the band in and out. Following the pal-off press, you've got pal-off raises. Same principle, hips and shoulders facing forwards. Keep the band in line with your midline of your body. And you can repeat both of these on both sides. Next up, we've got some more planks. So we've got the Copenhagen plank for the inside of our hip. You want to go on the inside of your foot, keep your hips nice and high, press through the whole of your forearm. Next up we've got the star plank, which is exactly the same but with your bottom foot on the floor. So you want to press through the outside of your foot, keep your hips nice and high, keep that top leg up. Last of our stabilising trunk exercises is the angel hold. So you want to imagine you're at the top of a star jump where everything's splayed out to the sides. Come into that position and hold nice and still. Now we've got our dynamic trunk exercises, um, first of which is going to be the cobra. So you're just going to move from a press up position, push your bum towards the floor and bring your head up to the sky. Following that, we've got our lunge and stick rotation. So you're going to be sitting in this lunge position, knee on the floor, and you're going to rotate either side. You want to try and keep your hips facing forwards and just rotate the shoulders and the trunk. Next, we've got our overhead side reach. So you're gonna take a little pigeon step and reach over the front leg. You don't have to have a stick in your hands. You can just do this with empty hands and just reach. And 
And number four is going to be our hip hikes. So you want to find a place where you're elevated and you can hang one leg off. You want to keep that leg that's planted nice and straight. You don't want to bend at the knee and you're just going to drop the other hip down as far as you can and bring it back up. Number five is our sit-ups. You want to have a partner putting your, their feet on yours. Knee should be at 90 degrees and you want your hands on your head but not pulling your head up. Number six is our Jefferson curl. So you want to sit up nice and tall, bring your chin down towards your chest and bend over forwards and then slowly bring yourself back up. This movement is really important to be nice and controlled. So make sure you're not rushing down and rushing back up. Number seven is our side plank hip drop. So you want to find that side plank position, nice and long, hips high, pushing through the whole forearm, and then just drop the hips down to the floor and bring them right back up again. Number eight is our leg lowers. So you want to find this position with your legs up, pushing your lower back into the floor. As you lower the, your legs down, keep that lower back pushed into the floor. Don't let it come up. Be nice and controlled. Bring your heels all the way down to the floor. These are our more explosive trunk movements. So we've got our med ball side throws. Keep your hips facing forwards. Shoulders rotate back, and throw the ball to a partner. Try not to throw it too hard so you're not hitting them in the face. Similar principle for these lunging med ball side throws. Come down into a lunge, knees at 90 degrees. Rotate the shoulders back, keeping the hips forward and throw it to your partner. Number 11 is gonna be our rotational med ball slams. You want your feet around shoulder width apart. Bring the ball in a nice big circle above your head and then throw it into the floor. Number 12 is our med ball overhead rebounds. You want to be nice and tall, throw the med ball at the wall and keep your arms as high as you possibly can. So this is the first of our shoulder complex exercises. We've got the rib cage press up. Come into the press up position, head to heel, strong as steel, keep that nice and long. You want your, to let your shoulder blades come together as you come down, keep your elbows locked out and then push the floor away, bring yourself up as high as you possibly can. Number two is our banded scapular retraction. Again, you wanna keep your elbows nice and long and you're gonna bring your shoulder blades together and then slowly release them. Number three is our cross body down dog. So you're gonna come into that press up position again and then push your hips nice and high, bringing your hand to your opposite foot. You wanna reach as far as you can. If you can reach past your foot, do so. Number four is our overhead carry. You wanna push the dumbbell as far as you can above your head, keeping your elbow locked out. You're gonna walk 10 to 15 meters and then you're gonna walk backwards. You wanna keep the dumbbell nice and still. You don't want it to go side to side or forwards or backwards. Just keep it above your head. Number five is our screwdriver. So you're gonna be lying on the floor, back nice and flat against the floor. Push the dumbbell up as high as you can, and then you're gonna rotate your palm from facing towards your head to facing towards your feet. Keep it nice and controlled, keep the dumbbell still. You just wanna rotate almost like it's on a kebab skewer. Number six is gonna be our teacups. So you want to use a really light weight plate, bring it up and around your head and then under past your body. And you can go backwards if you want to, or if you wanna stick with the first one, just keep doing that one. Number seven is our banded chest fly. So you wanna have the band around your back at chest level, bring your hands together and pull them apart. Similar concept for number eight, pull apart. So you wanna have your hands out shoulder height, pull them apart as far as you can, and try and squeeze your shoulder blades together.
These are our squatting movements. Number one, we've got our thumbs up squat. You're gonna have your feet between shoulder and hip width apart. Thumbs out at shoulder width in front of you. You're gonna try and keep your chest up. I wanna see the logo on your shirt. And you wanna try and have your knees coming over your toes. Number two is our goblet squat. Again, feet between hip and shoulder width apart. Try and keep your chest up. See the logo on your shirt. If these are too difficult to keep that chest up, to make it easier, you can have something under your heels and just raise those heels a little bit. That'll make it a lot easier. Number three is our overhead squat. This is a progression of our thumbs up and goblet squats. You wanna have something over your head. Doesn't have to be heavy. This is just a stick of wood. Again, same foot position between hip and shoulder width. Try and keep your chest up. Push your knees out over your toes. Create space for the hips to drop into. Number four is our lunge hold. You want the majority of your weight over the front foot. You want your knees at about 90 degrees. Keep your chest nice and tall. From the back knee to the shoulder, it should stay in a straight line. Now we've got our walking lunges. So you're gonna take a step forwards. Come into that same lunge position, 90 degrees at the knees, knee to shoulder, nice and straight. Same thing with the reverse lunges, number six. So you're gonna take a step backwards, find that lunge position at the bottom, and bring it back up. Number seven is our side lunge. So you take a step out to the side, try and sink your hips as low as you possibly can, and keep your chest nice and tall. Number eight is our pistol squat. So you're gonna stand on one leg. With your knee coming straight forwards, don't let it come in. You're gonna sit your bum back and down to a box. Or if you're feeling confident, don't need a box. Just try and keep your chest up. Lastly, number nine, we've got an overhead pistol squat. Keep the stick as high as you can above your head. And exactly the same principle. Knee comes forwards, hips go down. Sit down, keep your chest up, and bring it back up. Now we're onto our hinging movements. Number one is our kneeling bum to ankle. So you're gonna come on your knees nice and tall. Try and push your bum right back down to your heels and bring it back up again. Number two is our double leg glute bridge. So you want to have your lying on your back. Your shin should be about 90 degrees to the floor. And you're gonna push your bum up to the sky. Try and keep your rib cage tucked down into your belly button to do this. Number three, similar principle to the kneeling bum to ankle, is gonna be standing bum to wall. So you're just gonna stand half a pigeon step away from the wall, push your bum backwards till it hits the wall, control it and bring it back up. You wanna try and keep a straight spine as you do this. Number four is gonna be our glute bridge marches. So similar to number two, shins at 90, 90 degrees to the floor, bring your hips nice and high, keeping those hips nice and high, you're gonna bring one foot off the floor at a time. Number five is our hamstring walkout. So come into the tall glute bridge position, walk your heels out so your legs are straight and then bring them back in. You wanna take nice small steps and keep those hips nice and high. Number six is our single leg toe touch. So you wanna stand on one leg, press your whole foot into the floor. Don't let it come onto the outside of your foot. Push your hips back. Touch with your hand to your opposite foot. Number seven is our weighted glute bridge. Again, shin 90 degrees to the floor. Keep your ribcage tucked down to your belly button and then bring your hips up nice and high as possible. You can use a dumbbell, kettlebell or a barbell. Number eight is gonna be our RDL. You can use dumbbell, bands, or a barbell for this. But it's exactly the same as the bum to wall. You're gonna push your bum back, slight bend at the knees, and bring it back up whilst keeping a straight spine. Number nine is our single leg glute bridge. Shin at 90 degrees to the floor. 
Push your whole foot into the floor, bring your hips nice and high. You can have the other leg straight or bent, that's personal preference. Try and have a pause at the top, pause at the bottom. Keep tension throughout. Number 10 is our single leg hamstring bridge. So exactly the same as a single leg glute bridge, but you're gonna have your heel elevated and you're gonna be pushing through your heel rather than your whole foot. You wanna keep your knee and your toes facing up to the sky, don't let them come out to the side. And you're gonna try and bring your hips nice and high. 